what's up with the, with, frankly, with the Republican Party and the Patriot Act? And, and you know, has bin Laden won the war on terrorism? Back in 1998, bin Laden came out and said, you know, he was going to attack America if we didn't pull our troops out of Saudi Arabia, where they were defiling the Holy Land by having men watch pornography and drink alcohol and women drive cars and show, show their elbows. Uh, if we didn't pull those troops out that George W. Bush or George Herbert Walker Bush put there for the first Iraq war and the first Gulf War. And secondly, if the price of oil didn't go above $100 a barrel, because he felt that below that we were basically stealing the resources of his homeland. Uh, George W. Bush did neither, although he actually, after 9-11, pulled all the troops out of the Prince Sultan Air Force Base, and the price of oil did go over $100 a barrel on his presidency. So I guess maybe that's why we didn't get hit again. I don't know. But he, he came out and said this, you know, at the, and that and the, the consequences of his actions, if we didn't do those two things, would lead to two results. And this was published in the New York Times in 1998. Bin Laden said those two, two results would be, number one, that America would, would no longer be America, that it would, become, it would become a national security state. And number two, that, that the, um, actually I forgot what the number two was. Oh, that he was going to bleed us dry just like the Soviet Union. And uh, so, David Nall is with us. He's the national chair of the Republican Liberty Council. RLC.org is their website. And David, welcome to the program. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it looks to me from, from, first of all, from floating around your website, that sort of like the uh, uh, Progressive Democrats of America, PDAmerica.org, uh, which is progressives trying to take over the Democratic Party, that you guys are libertarians trying to take over the Republican Party. That's somewhat true. We believe that there's a core element of, Repub of libertarianism within the ideology of most Republicans. And it's just a matter of uh, sort of waking that up and uh, making the party leadership aware that so many of their constituents don't hold the way they're running the party. Right. From the Ron Paul into, uh, the, well, there's, there's a fairly large libertarian streak within the Republican Party. So, the question, didn't bin Laden win the war on terrorism when we gave away our freedoms? Look at uh, what's happening with the renewal of the Patriot Act. Well, you know, he's, he hasn't won an absolute victory, obviously, since he's, he's dead and, and they haven't conquered America and, and converted us all to Islam. Well, he never but said he was going to try and do that. He just said he was going to bleed right. us dry and that he was going right. to change the fundamental nation, nature of our country to those, something more like Mussolini. Goals, right. Those two goals, certainly, he has had great success in. Um, and it's our fault. Yeah. You know, not, not in the way we provoked them, perhaps, but it's our fault for falling for that uh, you know, threat yeah. and taking the threat the wrong way and reacting to it in a way which doesn't make much sense. Uh, the real threat from terrorism here within the United States is very small. Um, no more now, no more instances of terrorism now than there was back in the 1970s. And there's no reason for us to have different security measures now that we had back then. Uh, there is no justification for it. Certainly not to give up all our Fourth Amendment rights the way that we have under the Patriot Act. And, well, it, but it's a huge industry. I mean, there's. Yeah, I live here in Washington D.C. and you travel in the. You go go down to the Pentagon and then go to Crystal City and and the suburbs right around the Pentagon. And every, I mean, there are huge gated communities that you that you can drive through um, sometimes, and and you see these mansions. I mean, you know, fifteen, twenty bedroom mansions, and they're not necessarily even the CEOs, just the high level people in the military industrial complex. There's huge money being made in this town. Well, this is just part of the overall growth of government we've seen in the last couple of decades. Well, this uh, isn't government. This issue. is this is the private. This is the private sector that is frankly, driving government that is saying, yeah, I'm talking about the defense contractors. Right, well, sure, but I mean, we've seen... And the private prison industry. Of government. Yeah, that's another, another whole other problem we have, uh, is the situation of the prisons. Uh, but when it comes to the defense industry, the defense industry obviously is working very closely with the government, and they've, they've gained enormous benefits, more than the security uh, issue from the wars. Yeah. Um, these endless wars that we're engaged in don't make much sense either. Um, they aren't helping us as far as our domestic security is concerned, and they are costing us enormous amounts of money that we can't afford to pay. Uh, there's no, no justification for it uh, in any kind of logical way. And I think more and more Republicans are coming around to understanding that, if not on the, the sort of the issue of principle that we shouldn't be meddling in everybody else's foreign policy and, and getting involved in everybody else's country and how they're running it, uh, more and more Republicans at least realize that the cost is unsustainable. Um, and that cost, a lot of it, of course, goes into the pocket of the defense contractors you mentioned. Um, but to be fair, it's not just defense. It's, it's many other aspects of our government have grown to the point where uh, they have become more expensive than is justifiable by what they do for us. Um, and that's a concern that we have across the board. We're talking with David Nall. Uh, he's, am I pronouncing that right, David? Yeah, that's right. N-A-L-L-E, -L -L -E, the national chair of the Republican Liberty Council, the website rlc.org. And not all conservatives want to extend the Patriot Act. 
This extension of the Patriot Act, I know that there are some Democrats who are speaking out against it. Um, you know, Dennis Kucinich and others uh, who opposed the original Patriot Act from the get-go. And in fact, you know, Tom Daschle, uh, who the Patriot Act had to go through in the Senate, and and Pat Leahy, the senator from Vermont, who is chairman of the of uh, what I guess is now called the Homeland Security um, Committee. No, the, or was it Judiciary? Whatever it was, he his committee was the committee that 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 uh, the Patriot Act had to go through in order to get to the floor, and then Daschle had to bring it to the floor. And both of these guys, at, at various times before the you know when the Patriot Act was first introduced, right after 9/11 said that they had deep reservations about it. And of all the members of Congress, these were the only two guys who got anthrax, a mystery that still has not been solved. And they had to move out of their offices. They had no access to their information. And they kind of backed off on their opposition to this. Uh, I mean, shouldn't that have been a flag to us to begin with? And, and, who, and, and to what extent is there Republican and Democratic opposition to renewing the Patriot Act for another four years? Well, what we're seeing right now is a replay of what happened back in February. Uh, back in February, they tried to, the party leadership on both sides tried to ram through a renewal of the Patriot Act, in that case, for six years. Um, and there was enough resistance to it, even though they were only giving people about three days' notice uh, to do anything about it. There was enough resistance that they compromised on a plan to extend it for six, to, I guess, for eight months. Um, and what they're trying to do now is repeat the same thing, and they still have several months to go before they have to do it. Um, but now they're trying to ram it through again. They only announced they were doing it on Thursday. There's been no time to really get an organized resistance to it from the grassroots. Um, even the people in the Senate and the House who are trying to oppose it are having a hard time sort of getting the, their, their forces together to oppose it effectively. Yeah. Um, and the idea now is to ram it through for four years um, without, in this case, what they're planning to do today is that in the Senate they're planning to vote on cloture uh, around 5 o'clock and have no debate on it whatsoever. Um, and just ran through these remaining provisions and then passed it to the House, which is supposed to take care of them with another 48 hours after that. And this Again, is a four-year extension no of the Patriot Act. Yeah, it's a slightly less extension than they proposed previously. Um, but there's no reason for these provisions to be extended at all. Um, there's going to be an effort uh, today in the House, uh, in the Senate, by uh, Senator Rand Paul to introduce some amendments uh, which would basically neutralize the worst aspects mm -hmm. of what's being uh, uh, voted on uh, to basically restore some of the constitutional protections uh, uh, for due process. Uh, for uh, uh, protecting our rights uh, against search and seizure, uh, taking people's business records, um, and uh, preserving so they wouldn't be able to preserve all of our information in a database, things like that, which are part of these provisions. Um, and also the blanket search warrants uh, under the uh, national security letters, uh, which are a huge sort of uh, violation of the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, absolutely. David, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the War Powers Act rider and about how Republicans are responding to your organization and how this is going. David Nall is with us. He's the national chair of the Republican Liberty Council uh, or the Republican Liberty Caucus. Our Liberty Caucus is the Twitter at our Liberty Caucus. Uh, RLC.org is the website. David, welcome back. Hi. Um, we were talking about uh, bin Laden and the Patriot Act and all that sort of thing and the uh, opposition that you all are organizing against that. I'm curious uh, if you are also going after this rider that was inserted by a Republican senator or congressman, rather, in the House of Representatives into the renewal of the uh, of the military budget, the military authorization bill that basically says that the president has unlimited war powers acts as long as there is one single terrorist alive anywhere on the planet. Yeah, we think that's crazy. Um, we haven't yet uh, made it a major issue for us to push yet. We have had some you know, general statements opposing the action in Libya and this violation of the War Powers Act with the uh, failure to, to, to purport, report it to Congress and to get Congress's approval within 60 days. Um, we don't like the War Powers Act much to start with. Uh, right, it violates the Constitution in, in and of itself. Right. Yeah, but if they're going to have the War Powers Act, they ought to at least follow the War Powers Act. And we don't need anything that's even more draconian than the War Powers Act itself is at this point. That's just, just outrageous. Um, I don't think that that's going to get a lot of support, even from Republicans. Um, I think that we're, we're actually making some progress. We got a bunch of people who were Liberty Caucus types elected uh, last fall, mm -hmm. and we are seeing a sort of a, a change in the voting patterns. There are a lot more Republicans opposing this kind of thing now than there were before. And, and I think that the pressure that's coming up with 2012, and the awareness that there is sort of a change in the mood of the party, it's going to have some effect on, on how much they can get people on board to support these kinds of measures in the future. Um, Patriot right. Act, of course, because it's already in, in, in force, is easier for them to, uh, to push through uh, than something brand new that would be examined from the very beginning uh, in detail. Um, they, you know, the Patriot Act, they have managed to you know, trim off some of the worst sections already, 
except for these last few that are that, that are there that are particularly bad. Um, so there's an argument that they can make that you know we're, we're, it's only the be- the good parts of the Patriot Act that we're keeping. Yeah, you know, it's it's not a very convincing argument to me, but it, it will swing over some voters. The problem we see, you know, in the Republican Party, and I think this is the problem in the Democratic Party as well, is that the party leadership really has become, you know, seriously disconnected from the grassroots of the party. Yes. And with the people out here, you know, voting and, and working in the party and, and, you know, trying to move the party forward and, and still trying to support it, um, what they want and what leaders like John Boehner um, are doing, and Mitch McConnell in the same way, uh, doesn't, they don't connect at all. Uh, the interest of the leadership of the party seems to be the interest of big business, military industrial complex, as you said, uh, of the government itself. Well, and, uh, of and apropos politics. of that, you said, you know, several new members uh, are are uh, Lib- Republican Liberty Council friendly or libertarian friendly that were just elected to Congress. Uh, I'm assuming you mean the House of Representatives. And yet the oh, entire... Pardon? Senate, too. we got Rand Paul and Mike, uh, and, uh, Mike Lee in the Senate. Okay, fine. Uh, that, that entire group, I, I don't know, frankly, Mike Lee and Rand Paul's position, but I know the, the, every single one of the freshman Republican in the House of Representatives is taking the position which is not held by any other industrialized country on earth, but is held by politicians in the United States who are in the employ, basically, of the Koch brothers or big oil, that there ain't no such thing as human-caused global warming, don't worry, uh, be happy, when all, all credible scientists on Earth say that's nonsense and we've got to do something in these, like this horrific hurricane or tornado that we saw just uh, yesterday or the day before in the Midwest, you know, our indications. We've got 5% more moisture in the atmosphere right now than we had 20 years ago, and it's making all our storms worse, and this is the result of global warming. How do you how do you reconcile these guys who call themselves Tea Partiers but are really funded by, you know, big oil basically? I mean, the Koch brothers run the biggest privately owned oil company in the United States, and they're they're very into you know dirty industries, carbon carbon uh, emitting the, the, industries. The Koch brothers with the Koch brothers with also, libertarian also principles. Pro, you know, you you got to well squaring the Koch brothers with libertarian principles is not difficult because the Koch brothers are very pro libertarian, and they have been only when it suits their interests. Well, but they've also been financially the biggest supporters of some of the libertarian organizations in the country, and usually with very few strings or no strings attached. Um, they may be, you know, trying to promote their own best interests, but at the same time, uh, they're also trying to promote a certain amount of individual liberty and an environment. For but what they're calling into individual wise. liberty, I mean, they want to take down government regulation of their industry. They want to reduce taxes on billionaires like them. I don't hear the Koch brothers, or for that matter, the Tea Party, talking about... You know, let's do something that's going to help the average working person. Well, when you're talking about the Libertarian Party, when you're talking about the uh, Cato Institute or Reason Magazine, you're talking about organizations that at one time or another were supported by Koch Industries. Cato and Reason um, still are. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and the level of support may have gone down some, but those are organizations which do a they lot of They wouldn't exist without, the Coke, without, without Coke oil right. and, 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 you know, all of the big polluting industries run but, by Coke. But, and with that's... That money, they, but with that money, they do a lot more than just advocate for, for big oil. Um, in fact, big oil is probably a very small portion of what they, they care about. They're advocating for individual liberties across the no, board. No, my point, though, is uh, that what they're calling individual liberties is what will benefit their big oil company. I'm not hearing right. them talk about the individual liberty of, of you know, workers, for example, to negotiate against employers, you know, to, to, to fix the well, inherent what, what imbalance in the, the workplace. What about the individual liberty of workers not to join the union if they choose not to? Well, that's that's what a really about? good question, I do, and and that's where you have to ask: Is it appropriate for there to be democracy in the workplace? I mean, if you believe in democracy, small d democracy, and more than half of the people in the workplace say, you know, we'd like to have a union here, isn't that democratic? They can have a union. Why can't the union just represent half the people in the workplace and the other half? Well, because the, join well, that's like saying, well, okay, we can have fifty-one percent of the people in America vote for Barack Obama, but the other forty-nine percent don't have to recognize him as president. In a democracy, work, when work, when you have a majority not, rule, you have majority rule. It's really simple. Yeah, but there's no social contract in the workplace. It's not. It's not a government. Well, the, um, actually, there is. An <laughs> and if there isn't, it's called. It's not called the workplace. It's called a kingdom. And that's what the Koch well, brothers are promoting. But a business is owned by the stockholders or by the owner of the business. It's not. So it is a kingdom. You're, you're acknowledging that. Shouldn't there be something to balance that power? Oh, I think that there should be a balance of power between worker and, and, and management. Well, that's because what unions are called. Their rights should be equally represented and equally protected. But that should include the right not to be forced to join a union. Okay, we kind of got off topic. Uh, Dave, now, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on uh, <laughs> ending the War Powers Act, Ryder. Can't agree on everything, but at least we can work together on the things that uh, we do agree on. There you go.